Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation with complex numbers. I hope I haven't made this problem before because that looks very familiar but I kind of like these kinds of questions that are especially exponential. So we have e to the power iz equals 1 plus i. So we, we see the i twice, well, what is i? What does i mean or what is, what is z? z is a complex number which can be written as a plus b i and then a and b are real numbers and i is the square root of negative one. So hopefully I answered both of those questions. If you knew the complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos where I go over basics of complex numbers. And also if I have another, I have another channel called Cyber Math, Cyber with an S, you can also go ahead and check it out if you like algebra and number theory problems. A little bit of trigonometry, just a tiny bit of geometry here and there. Okay, so what is this channel called? a plus pi because we use that all the time how do we use it let's go ahead and find out for example to find what z is in this equation we can go ahead and replace z with a plus pi of course youtube does not allow you to pick a name like this unfortunately i tried it but it didn't work you can't use the plus sign it's forbidden okay anyways i had to pick a different name but which is the same thing because it's still a plus pi you get the idea right Hopefully one day they'll allow this and I can get it before someone else can get it, right? Obviously that's what happens sometimes. I tried it uh, on, I think it was on Twitter and some, someone else got A plus BI. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's see if this can help us solve the problem. Replace Z with A plus BI and you get this. How's that gonna help? I don't know. Maybe I can just natural log both sides, can't I? Well, we can kind of try it. And when we natural log both sides, that should give us ln e, which is one. So I can kind of forget about e. And write this as i times a plus b i equals ln one plus i. And this should be fairly easy to solve, even if you didn't call this a plus b i, because our goal is to solve for a plus b i, right? And then from here, I could probably just do, okay, a plus b i is just ln 1 plus i divided by i. But what is ln 1 plus i? That's another question we need to answer, right? Well, let's talk about it. And then I will show you the second method, which I think is a little better. But the natural log of a complex number is called the complex logarithm, and it's multi-valued, which means there are multiple values, depending on the branch you choose. But in general, the ln of a complex number z can be written as ln absolute value of z, which you can also call r for modulus or absolute value, plus i times the argument of z. What is the argument? Argument is the angle. So if your z is here, kind of makes an angle, which we're going to call theta, and the distance from zero is going to be r, which is the modulus, and this is our number z. Make sense? Okay, hopefully that does. And if you have the real num part as a and the imaginary part as b, then z can be written as a plus b, we already talked about it, right? And tangent theta from here is given as b over a. So sometimes, uh, not all the time, be careful, theta can be written as r tangent b over a. Why do I say sometimes? Because if theta is not in the first quadrant, then you kind of have to adjust for the result that comes from r tangent. So you gotta be very careful with these things, but that's the general idea, and hopefully you can apply it to this scenario. How do you apply it to this scenario? Well, we can kind of try to find ln 1 plus i from here by using the formula that I just gave you, ln absolute value of r. What is the absolute value of r? r is root 2, so I'm going to write it as ln root 2, and then plus i times, of course, when you have 1 plus i, it's just going to make a pi over 4 radians because it's 1 man root 2. You get the idea? It's an isosceles right triangle. Awesome. So now I have the following that I can plug in, right? But I have to divide by i and then go to the result from there, right? Make sense? Okay, cool. But what if you did it a little differently like this? Okay, this is ln 1 plus i and I have it on the right hand side. Why don't I just distribute this? It's going to give me a i plus b i squared, but that's just negative b plus a i equals ln root 2 plus i times pi over 4. That's the equation we're getting, right? Exactly. So from here, can I find the value of a and b? Absolutely. Look at this. This is the real part. That's the real part, right? 
So B is equal to negative ln root 2. What about A? A is the imaginary part of the coefficient of i. There you go. It's supposed to be pi over 4. That's it, right? And since z can be written as a plus bi, a plus, of course, minus bi. And we can put the i here so that we are done, complete, right? That should be the answer. But wait a minute. Isn't there another way to approach it? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and look at, uh, look at it from another perspective, which I usually call the second method. Okay? So what's our equation? e to the iz equals 1 plus i. By the way, before I get into the depth of the second method, I just want to tell you there's a formula called Euler's formula, and it's a beautiful, beautiful identity because using that, we can come up with so many interesting things, but it's, this is what it is. e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. So that looks like a really cool way to approach this problem, don't you think? Because this gives me immediately the result in standard form. Take a look at this. Beautiful, right? So now I can go ahead and apply it here. But wait, theta doesn't have to be real. Z can be, or theta can be complex as well. Complex numbers are welcome. Of course, this channel is all about complex numbers. They're always welcome. But here, e to the iz can be written as cosine of z plus i sine of z. And I know that it's equal to 1 plus i. Uh-oh. This is such a cool way to approach the problem. And hopefully we can solve it, right? No. Unfortunately not. Sorry to disappoint you. But from here, if you say that, okay, real parts equal real parts and imaginary parts equal imaginary parts, you're going to run into a contradiction because cosine z and sine z cannot be one at the same time because sine squared plus cosine squared is one even when z is complex. Uh-oh, that's the keyword, complex, because cosine z is not necessarily the real part, real part because if z is not real, then cosine z is probably not real, so you can't really talk about it that way. So what should we do? We should do something different. Let me show you. By the way, this was kind of like a little insertion before the second method. It's not the second method. Here's the second method, okay? e to the iz equals 1 plus i. So I just showed you a method that doesn't work. You have to be very careful with complex numbers, okay? It's a slippery slope. So now we're going to use uh, do the following. Turn this into a polar form. We already talked about it. It can be written, wait a minute, did we talk about it? No, not really. But any complex number can be written as r times e to the i theta, thanks to Euler's formula again. So now this is going to be root 2 times e to the power i pi over 4. But you got to be careful because we can add multiples of 2n. I mean 2 pi, right? Like 2 pi n. Didn't, didn't I tell you that this is multi-valued? So this time with the, with the second method, let's just go ahead and use the... Um, general uh, approach in the first method we found the principal value but from here if you log you get iz equals ln root 2 plus i times uh oh come on come down notability plus 2 pi n results are going to be slightly different but it's the same idea multiply both sides by negative i you're going to get negative i squared which is 1 by the way that's why i multiply by negative i to get 1 and this will give you pi over 4 plus 2 pi n minus i times ln root 2. Now you can go ahead and compare this to the result from the first method and they're going to be very, very similar, obviously, right? But the difference will be here with the 2 pi n, which gives us all the solutions. But if n is 0, we're going to get a particular value, which is the principal value, and that'll be pi over 4 minus i times ln root 2. Let's go ahead and check out results from Wolfram Alpha and then we're going to finish Wolfram Alpha too bad. You can't just find the log of 1 plus i. You should give it to us. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.